Hey, this is John, and today we're going to do a video walkthrough showing uh, how to set up Gati and use PacketRide to expose it and put it on the internet. So if you're not familiar with Gati, it is a GitHub-like service, um, very similar to like you know GitHub, GitLab. The cool thing about Gati is that it's very lightweight and it's very simple to set up. I use GitLab at home and at work. I've been using it for a whole bunch of years at this point. But I think if I was starting from scratch, I would probably use Gati, or if I ever have any issues, I might switch to something like this. And so if you want to do a source control management, Gati is very cool. You should definitely check it out. And the setup is pretty quick and easy to do. They have a Docker Compose file. That's one of the ways you could set this up. And uh, there's a lot of options. You could you know, use different databases. Um, but this Docker Compose is pretty basic, but it works very well. The one thing I'm going to point out over here is this, um, this uh, host directory that you can map to a volume inside the container. Um, that's always very cool. So if you're going to do something like this, you always want to keep your data on your host so you don't lose it. But for us, the, the most important information is the ports right over here. And so uh, Gati is running an HTTP server uh, internally in the container on port 3000, and it's also running uh, SSH on a standard port 22, but on the host, um, they're ex they're ex exporting um, port 222 to that internal SSH server, and they're they're doing this because most likely this container is running on some kind of Unix machine that's running an SSH daemon, and so they don't want that collision. This isn't going to be a problem for us because we're just going to be forwarding um, you know any traffic to a host port, and so. Uh, but it's interesting to go over. I have a doc compose file over here. So we will start that up. And now we've got it running. And you'll see that um, on the host, port 3000 and port 222 um, are mapped to some internal ports. So we're going to use PacketRide to expose this onto the internet. So you know we could share it with our friends, our team, or just kind of access it anywhere. Um, I don't have any tunnels set up over here, so I will set that up real quick. Uh, I have some other videos where I go into uh, the details of like what it's doing. And so I have an introductory video. So if you're, you just want to sort of see that happen more slowly, please check out that video. I'm going to give this tunnel a better name here. Okay, and before we start connecting our, our tunnel um, or starting our tunnel and configuring some traffic rules, let's just set up Gati first. So it is running on port 3000. So we're going to use a lot of the default um, configuration, just the most basic simple configuration. Uh, you may want to check out some other tutorials to see what else you could do to just make this more robust. So for this walkthrough, I'm going to be using this custom domain name. It's git.packetdemo.com. This is the hosting that we're going to use for SSH when we're cloning. And there's also a base URL that um, that Git is going to use, and we want that and that that it's going to basically redirect users to. And so we want that to also be our custom domain. And so those are the only uh, settings that we're going to change. Everything else is the default. It's okay that this thing failed because we don't have a tunnel running right now. So before we um, start creating those traffic rules, I just want to show you all that um, I set up ownership already on this domain. So when we try to create a traffic rule for this custom domain, it's not going to complain to us. So currently we don't have any rules. Um, so my domain is git.packetdemo.com. Um, my destination is localhost. It's port 3000. So I want the PacketRide client to take care of setting up certificates for me using Let's Encrypt. And so it's basically going to function as a TLS terminator. Um, I'm running on a local host over here, and I trust my network, so that's not a problem for me. And it'll just make this very convenient for setup. Okay, so now you'll see here that we were assigned this host name, Misty Dust, and so 
I am going to, I use DigitalOcean for my uh, domain name management. So let me create a new record here. Okay, so we've got a new record here. So let's fix that screen. All right, so let's try this again. There might be a little bit of a, of a delay because you know when you're setting up DNS, um, it does have to go through a process of like communicating changes to like other DNS servers, so just be patient with that. And also sometimes when you're using Let's Encrypt for the very first time for a new domain, there is handshaking that happens between the packet ride client and Let's Encrypt. And so um, you know, give give that a moment sometimes. We don't we don't have a user here set up, and the very first user you create is the admin user. So let's just create an account here. And for all these um, Git-based systems, the first thing you want to do is set up a, an SSH key. So let me use the public key that I have here. Um, and let me also get rid of past known hosts. Um, there we go. So I will add this key. Let's go to my dashboard. I don't have any repos, so let's create a new repo. So I'm going to leave this as a public repo for the time being, and I'm going to have it create some, some basic files here. And so what we'll do is we'll just clone this repo using the, uh, the HTTPS address. Okay, and so that worked. This is not a surprise. Um, let's try the SSH. So this is this is going to fail because it's basically trying to connect to our edge server, um, the edge server that our tunnel is connected to. So so this is this is not a big surprise here. So the way we get around this is by creating a um, TCP port. So right now we don't have anything. We don't have any ports that we requested the Edge server to allocate for us. Um, this demo account uses a basic plan, so you get one port per tunnel. And so now we have a port. And so now let's, well, let's just here take a quick look at the different subcommands that we have here. So we're interested in the forward rule. And our port. Let me scroll up and just copy this value. So um, the value you want to use for port is the is the val is the port number that was allocated to us. The destination is our container, which is localhost, and our guest port is two two two. So now our rules look like this. So let's just start our tunnel back up. Uh, let's go back to this window. Okay, so it's still having a problem here. Now the reason why it's having a problem and it's pretty obvious is that our our tunnel is not receiving traffic on port 22 in the edge server and then forwarding it here. It's receiving it on um, that port that was allocated. And you'll notice that that port um, began with 22, so it's in the 22,000 range. So um, most TCP port forwarding um, use cases are probably going to be SSH, or at least I think that. So um, hopefully just having to memorize three numbers is easy. The really cool thing is that SSH um, in the client config allows us to override ports or the default port. And so now everything that uses SSH, even if it's using SSH under the hood, like when you're using Git, it's using SSH under the hood. Or if you're using um, modules, if you're programming with Go, it uses um, SSH under the hood. So now it's going to use this custom port instead of port 22. And so now, um, you'll, you'll also notice here that we had a second um, prompt for accepting a fingerprint. That's because this is the fingerprint of the SSH server running inside that container. Um, and so now we're able to clone it. Um, pretty easy. What we'll do here is let's just make some changes and say, yes, this is working. TCP port forwarding is cool. 
using SSH config to make non-standard ports easier to use is also cool. All right, so let's commit our change. And it's just complaining about some um, global config variables not being available. We will just push it. So as you can see, after we change that, um, once we added an entry for, for this host, git.pacademo.com, using git um, is basically works normally. We didn't have to specify anything. We just had to do a git push. So let's, um, so there we go. Our markdown file is updated. And so um, hopefully this was a useful example. Giti is just a really cool service. I like the way it looks. Um, a lot of people want to be able to stand up a source control uh, server and Giti is like so lightweight. Um, I, I think if I was starting um, from scratch uh, in my home lab, I would probably use this. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people using other services like Nginx or Traffic to set this up, and you know they've they've been they've been working through a lot of the um, the motions of trying to set it up, and we were able to set up the HTTP and the TCP forwarding rules pretty easily. And so uh, hopefully this is helpful to anybody who's um, trying to just get this working in their home lab um, or just trying to even get this to work um, in their office. And so hopefully this is helpful. Um, I, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, thanks again for uh, checking it out and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.